It's an ongoing situation in Auburn where water crews really racing to repair a massive water main break. The water is no longer gushing out of the street as it was earlier, but crews could be working all night to repair this break. Our Jana Barnello is live in Auburn with the story. Jana? Kim, Greg, we're here on Core Street in Auburn where crews are busy repairing a break to one of the main water lines in Auburn. Now, this has been going on for about three hours. Now, the break happened at 2.50. The water is shut off, but let's take a look at what the water situation was here just a few hours ago. Neighbors and witnesses are telling us that at one point the water was gushing as high as 20 feet in the air. A lot of water lost. Here's what happened. The um, a, a crew, crews were working on a natural gas line, in fact, and they accidentally hit the water main. And it's a 20 in 20 inch diameter, actually. And in that, they the hole in the water main is about tw uh, the size of a basketball. So this is a pretty a pretty big task fixing this right now. And joining me now is Sid Hazelton with the Water District. Sid, I just wanted to just to let the people of Auburn know what is the water supply right now? Is there water to the city? Yes, there is. This was, luckily for us, it was an isolated break. We were able to get on it fairly quickly. Uh, we turned off uh, about five valves that feed some of the side streets. Uh, right now we have about 30 homes that are out of water, but the supply for the city is very safe. Um, uh, it's, still, it's, still, it's still looking good for us right now. How long is it going to take to fix this? We should be able to fix it fairly quickly. We've got crews on site now. They're excavating the line. Um, hopefully it's a very small break. They should be able to fix it with a coupling and uh, people should be back in business hopefully tonight. And once the water does get back on, there's, is, is there going to be a boil water advisory for the homes in this immediate area? As, as a precaution, uh, these 30 homes, we are actually delivering by hand water to them now, and we are going to issue them a boil water notice uh, to boil their water till further notice. Just as a safety precaution exactly. moving forward. Okay. Exactly. All right. Thanks a lot, Sid Hazelton with the Water District. Traffic is being diverted right now, so you can't get up and down Goff Hill as the repairs continue. We'll stick around and tell, bring you the latest on News 13 at 11. Live in Auburn, I'm Jana Barnello, News 13. Back to you. All right. We certainly appreciate live updates from the scene there. Thanks, Jana. It is question one on next month's ballot. Do you want to allow same-sex couples to marry in Maine? The voters are going to have the final say on that, but efforts to influence those voters are in full swing right now, with just four weeks to go until Election Day. News 13's Brad Rogers joins us live now with details on how both sides are trying to sway your vote. Brad? Well, Kim and Greg, uh, both sides are working the phones, putting up signs and running TV ads, all of that costs money. Same-sex marriage supporters have raised nearly three and a half million dollars to try and get Mainers to vote yes on question one. That's eight times more than its opponents who have raised a little over four hundred thousand dollars. Tonight though both sides seem to be gearing up for a final push in the last weeks of their campaigns. With election day right around the corner both sides of the same-sex marriage debate are busy. Opponents are putting up signs Use those while supporters are working the phones. They've also launched new TV ads. We have three daughters. Our youngest, Katie, is gay. When we were young, we never dreamed about having a civil union or signing a piece of paper. We wanted to be married. I want our Katie to have what we have. Opponents have launched two ads of their own. They've come out with two ads, both of which are misleading and both of which contain uh, blatant lies. But the group Protect Marriage Maine stands by their message in its two new ads. Mainers um, deserve to be told the truth. They deserve to be told the consequences of what happens should a law like this pass. This one features former school counselor Donald Mendel, who claims he was discriminated against for coming out against same-sex marriage in 2009. When I supported traditional marriage, they tried to get me fired. They went after my state license. They talk about people being you know, sued and fined and fired in, in states where uh, marriage has been legalized. That is absolutely false. He was attacked and asked you know, for his license to be revoked and pulled aside, and that's before the law went into place. The other ad claims this referendum would change the traditional one man, one woman definition of marriage. But nobody has a right to redefine marriage. That is really crossing the line in a lot of people's minds. McTee says question one would allow same-sex couples to receive a marriage license while protecting religious freedom. It just shows that they really that they know they have no honest leg to stand on, that they have to scare voters, that they have to mislead voters. Well, you can learn much more about the same-sex marriage debate in Maine and all the other races this fall by going to our website, wgme.com, and clicking on the Vote 2012 icon.
All right, Brad, thanks so much. Well, we've had a bit of rain lately, a bit cooler out there, but nature is still helping to give Maine's economy a boost. Leaf peeping season is near peak right now, and that means money for Maine businesses. Our Steve Roldan joins us live from Falmouth with a look at how the season's going. Steve? Well, Kim, definitely a busy season as far as tourism goes here in the state of Maine. We've got a lot of beautiful sites out there in the fields and hillsides throughout our area, and it's literally bringing in people from all over the world. It's gorgeous, yeah. The colors of green, red, and orange dotting the landscape of northern New England. It's the arrival of fall colors, marking the arrival of yearly visitors called the leaf peepers. It's uh, three weeks. We spent some time in New York, but it was specifically for the foliage. Andrew Wilson and his wife Kirsty making the fall foliage sightseeing vacation all the way from England. There's some of the thousands of tourists and leaf peepers arriving on cruise ships with cameras in hand, stimulating the economy, a busy time for tourism. We came for that uh, chiefly, and uh, we went up to uh, uh, Mount Desert Island, and uh, we had really uh, beautiful colors. But uh, at first we thought for a while that we may we might be a bit early uh, and that it would be better in uh, in some days mm -hmm. and anyway we hope we'll have really beautiful colors in the White Mountains. And while the colors are starting to fade in northern and western Maine, they're just starting to peak here in southern Maine, a site likely to keep the leaf peepers around just a little bit longer. With those digital cameras you <laughs> take as many pictures as you like yeah. and then the problem later <laughs> is to choose between them. A lot of people taking those pictures all throughout our state. And as we said right now, the peak season typically for the coastal area of Maine is right around the middle part of October. So definitely expect to see those uh, leaf peepers throughout our area for at least another couple of weeks. That's the latest live here in Falmouth. Steve rolled on News 13. Back to you. All right. Certainly a beautiful time of year. Thanks, Steve. Absolutely. Well, a Maine soldier killed in Afghanistan will be laid to rest this week. The funeral for Sergeant First Class Aaron Henderson is scheduled for this Wednesday in Holton. Sergeant Henderson died a week ago in Afghanistan, injured when a roadside bomb exploded. Henderson was a Special Forces Communications Sergeant. This was his fourth deployment in support of combat operations. The funeral service for Henderson is scheduled for Wednesday at Holton High at 2 p.m. Eleven years ago, the first U.S. soldiers entered Afghanistan. Now, many of those service members are home now, are heading home as the troop withdrawal builds to 2014. But the military presence in the air, including drones, continues. And today, a group is protesting that presence. With names like Reaper, Cobra, and Avenger, members of Code Pink marched and protested in Portland today. They say their display represented the deaths of civilians by drones. Well, the group is protesting the United States' use of unmanned drone aircraft overseas. A representative for Code Pink says they're fed up with what they claim is a lack of oversight from Congress. We're concerned about unmanned aerial vehicles, mostly uh, called by the name drones, that are being used increasingly by the CIA and the White House to conduct war that is not under um, the kind of um, oversight from Congress that the Constitution provides for. Drones are being used to assassinate people without any charges being brought against them. Um, essentially, the executive branch of government is acting as prosecutor, judge, jury, and executioner. He says 32 members of Code Pink are in the Middle East right now trying to raise awareness about drone attacks. The military says the use of drones does help to fulfill important missions without unnecessarily putting U.S. service members into harm's way. Students will return to Hall Elementary tomorrow, and tonight parents are getting their first look at the repairs. Even though the school is open, it's not completely fixed. Eight classrooms and an office are still blocked off. The school has been closed since a fire late last month, with students attending class at the former Cathedral School in the interim. District officials are hoping the still damaged classrooms can reopen by next Monday. Until then, the displaced teachers and students will use other spaces in the school. The school is hoping all repairs will be done by the end of the year. Now, your Weather Authority forecast with Charlie Presti. Welcome back everyone. It's starting to feel like fall, isn't it? Temps struggle to get out of the mid-50s today. We'll do it again tomorrow. We'll add in more clouds and even some showers for your Tuesday. I don't think it's going to rain all day tomorrow, but coastal areas will see more numerous showers than 
inland towns. Clouds will have a hard time breaking up on Wednesday, but we should see at least a few sunny breaks during the afternoon. And another round of showers Wednesday night. We clear it out on Thursday, but it's going to be a breezy day on Thursday. Hey, temps are in the 50s. 53 for a temp in Portland. Look at Lewiston, low 50s. Wiscasset, low 50s. Even back up into Augusta, you're right around 50 degrees. Upper 40s for Freiburg. Look at Mount Washington, 23 degrees, where they had four inches of snow last night. This is the scene up at the Mount Washington Observatory at Mount Washington State Park. You can see a nice little snow drift right there as the sun is rising through the fog. This is the scene at Bretton Woods today, where they had a little dust of snow looking down at the Mount Washington Hotel. A little bit of snow on the higher peaks of the White Mountains in New Hampshire and the western mountains of Maine. This one coming out of Sugarloaf. Snow covered peaks of Sugarloaf over there in Caravasset Valley. So the mountains getting their first well, dosage of snow anyway around here. Doppler HD is quiet right now. There are no showers in our area, but uh, as you scan off to the south, we're seeing a steadier band of rainfall ever so slowly drifting to the north. And the reason I mentioned this, this is all associated with, with what will be an ocean storm that's going to be passing by offshore, but I think it comes closer close enough that it brings some of the rain into our neck of the woods during the course of the day tomorrow. So showers will threaten, uh, especially along southern areas as soon as about 6, 7, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We will see some on and off showers throughout the day, and when we don't have the showers, we'll likely just have mainly cloudy skies. Notice some showers arrive around 7 o'clock. Temps starting in the 40s, some 30s for inland towns. The higher peaks could see a little bit more uh, light snow and snow showers tonight into early tomorrow. Notice 3 o'clock in the afternoon, just a lot of clouds out there. There are a few hit and miss showers still. Temps still struggling to get out of the mid 50s. Normal highs are in the lower 60s. We will not reach that value tomorrow. Wednesday's looking slightly better. We'll start with clouds. Most of the day will be dry. Developing sunny breaks should send temps back into the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. Right behind me, there's a cold front. That feature arrives on Wednesday night with a greater chance for showers. We'll clear it out again on Thursday. So it's a very active weather pattern for sure. You can plan on something happening just about every other day. Tomorrow we have cloudy skies. There will be showers out there. Temps in the mid 50s. Wednesday most of the day should be dry, but showers will again threaten on Wednesday night. Temps will be in the upper 50s as at least a few sunny breaks develop by afternoon. Thursday looks nice. A little breezy though. Upper 50s. Chance for showers early in the day on Friday. If you plan to take you outdoors Friday, the afternoon's looking a lot better. Saturday looks nice, but look at the temps. Remember Remember, normal highs are in the low 60s. We'll be struggling to get out of the 50s for the next several days around here, and that includes part of the weekend. I'm happy to report that the weekend does look dry at this point with mm -hmm. our next round of showers arriving on Monday. But guys, did you feel how cool it was this morning? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, it's starting to feel like late fall. Certainly had to, had to adjust the yeah. outdoor gear. <laughs> Gra grab the heavier jacket on your way out this morning, right? Yeah. All right. It's thank you, there. Charlie. Yeah, thanks.